Lord, we thank you, Lord. You gave yourself for us. And you, never, you will not withhold any good from us, oh God. We thank you for that assurance that we have tonight. That you will do it. You will work everything for our good. You will open ways for us. You will bless our lives. Bless every one of us, Lord. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is no one in this room who doesn't want to be loved. There is no one in this room who doesn't want to be loved unconditionally. There is no one in this room who doesn't want someone who's unchanging to love him or her. And the first principle that I want to tell you about is about how our Heavenly Father, the creator of the whole universe, delights in being our Father and calling you and me His son and His daughter. If you were to read the, the scriptures, and if you were to read John chapter 1 verse 17, John 1 17 says, For the law came by Moses, but grace and truth by Jesus Christ. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth by Jesus Christ. You see, when Jesus came on, on, on the face of the earth, there were two things that he started to say. The first thing was about the kingdom of God, and the next thing that he started to say was God as his father. For till then, the revelation of God being the father was never there. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, you know, all of those revelations kept coming. But God as father revelation never came. And when Jesus came, he started to refer to God as his father. And that was significant because it drove the religious people mad. Because they just couldn't understand, nor could they comprehend, God as being their father. And if you, would, if you, if you want to get a glimpse of what it meant to the Jewish person, uh, if you can somebody read for me John chapter 5, verses 17 and 18? I mean, if we're carrying our Bibles, then John chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Jesus said to them, my father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Making himself equal with God. For the Jewish mind, when I call God my father, it means God and me are one. That's a terrific thing to be in. If God and me are one, that's a terrific combination to be in. And that is what was driving the, the, the religious people mad. Because here was Jesus coming and calling God the Father. I want you to know this. That that is God's overwhelming desire. That he gave his son. Okay. Upon the cross. That we could become his sons and daughters. I want to explain this a little more. Uh, just so that we appreciate what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to say. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 to 9. Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 to 9. Paul is talking about what uh, the Lord Jesus Christ did uh, when he came down on the face of the earth. This is how it goes. Philippians 2 6 to 9. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is about a free name. And God, the Bible says, the Lord Jesus Christ humbled himself and took upon the form of no reputation. Why was it a form of no reputation? Because when Adam was created, he was created in the image of God. Right? And what is the first thing that God told Adam after he created him? And God blessed him and said unto him, Be, fruit, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over every fish of the sea, every bird of the air, and every living thing that moves on the earth. That was the blessing. And when Adam sinned, what, was, what happened was that blessing went away. And he gave the authority which God had placed into his hands, into the hands of the devil. Now he was Jesus Christ who was a part of the triune God who gave that authority to Adam. Now having to come under the authority which has been stolen by the devil because Adam sinned. 
subjected himself to live a life of purity, took upon my sin upon himself upon the cross, shed his innocent, in innocent blood, died for me upon the cross, rose again, and when he rose again, he defeated Satan and took back that authority which Adam lost. But the beauty of it is this, that when he took that authority back, he gave it back to me who blew it up. That is love. That is love. I blew it. Jesus paid the price. But not only did he pay the price, he gives it back to me. And Paul describes this in two verses. Uh, Paul describes this in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 where he talks about how we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessing. I want you to know about the extravagant love of our Father and know this, that your Father and my Father, the creator of the whole universe, God who neither slumbers nor sleeps, is always watching over our lives and is interested in our lives. Is interested in our lives. Is interested in every little thing that you and I do. Question is, how much do I want to open myself up to Him? And that he respects my will to the point that I open up, he would come into my life. To the point where I open up areas of my life, he would come into my life. And I want you to also know this, that not only is he a father, but he's a loving father. The Bible tells in the book of 1 John chapter 4 verse 16, and we have known and believed the love that God had to us. Why? God is love. Um, you know, uh, my father loves me because I'm his son. He might not love somebody else's child the way he loves me. I am God's son because he is love. My father loves me because I am birthed by him. I have a relationship with him. Uh, he is my father, my, I am his son, and hence he loves me. But I am God's son because God is love. You know the difference? That love is unchanging. There's nothing you and I can do to earn his love. There's nothing you and I can do to become his child. It is by grace. And therefore by faith I take it. That's about it. He's done everything for me upon the cross. This love of God is unconditional. This love of God does not depend on how talented you are. This love of God does not depend on anything because He's the one who's created you and me. Like Billy Graham said, even if you were the only person on planet Earth, He would still have sent His Son, Lord Jesus Christ, to die for that one new person on the cross. That is the extravagant love of our Father who is the same as today, today and forever. Why is this so important? Because oftentimes as young people, we struggle with identity. And I'm going to lead from here on to the next point, which is, what is my motivation when I make a choice? Because if I don't know my identity, my motivations for making choices can be founded on things which can lead me into trouble. You know, um, I got, I became a Christian when I was doing my third year engineering. I studied in Karnia. Um, I, I didn't want to get into Karnia because uh, I heard a lot about it. And, you know, I, I actually did not want to, but then I ended up there. And uh, somebody came and, you know, I, I, I've done church. I've done Sunday school. I, I've done all of that. And I never knew the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, I was sitting in the hostel, fifth semester, third year, before the examination, study holidays, and this guy walks into the room, plonks himself on my bed, and right across my table he sits and he starts talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. There was anger within me because, you know, I, I was so irritated because he said, you know what, I know, you don't need to tell me. But he, he, he kept talking, and the one thing, one statement that he made, it broke every bit of the facade that I had put around myself. And he said, Roy, do you know Jesus loves you? And he wants to use you. I, there's nothing great about that statement. But you know, when he made that statement, in front of me was the fact that I was such a wretched sinner and everything that I had done kept coming to my mind. And the only question that kept coming to my mind was this, why is it that you still love me? Why is it that you still love me? 
Why is it that you still love me? You see, I was a guy, I was a part of the cultural team. We were 13 of us, we would always hang out together, go to the mess together, uh, do mess together, everything. Okay? And, 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 and if I were to be alone, the reality of who I was and the emptiness of who I was would hit me that we would even sleep together, you know, all of us, all 13 into one room. Because we were scared to face the reality of who we were. But the day I got saved, the first thing God did was establish my identity in and through Him. That changed the way I saw myself, and because it changed the way I saw myself, it changed the way I did and saw others as well. Everything changed. God my Father, God my loving Father, God my Father who is the same as today, today and forever, extravagant love. One who is always concerned about me. I want you to look at how precious each one of us. Look at Psalms chapter 139 verses 13 to 18. Psalms 139, 13 to 18. It's a verse that I'm sure we all know, but yeah, let's just go through that. Psalms 139, 13 to 18. Okay. <clears throat> For thou hast possessed my reins, You've covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and my soul knows them right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Then eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuous in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! Think about it fearfully and wonderfully made and I want to read verse 16 your eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect and in thy book all my members were written which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them when my wife conceived when we took her for the first scan which is a six week scan my daughter in the scan was close to eight millimeters eight millimeters all of us were that size in our mother's womb. But you know what's the beauty of that? That God fearfully, wonderfully romanced over my life and your life. That he wrote a book about you and me of every day of our lives. Every day of our lives. And David sees that and he says, How precious are your thoughts concerning me. How precious, how precious, how precious. You know, you and I are precious in God's eyes. Let not the devil try to deceive you by thinking otherwise. You are extremely precious. He has got the whole world concocted in terms of the way you look, in terms of the way you can speak, in terms of the way you can sing, and gives a lot of weightage to that. But none of that matters. None of that matters. You know, just by the passing, the doctors told me and my wife that we'll never have children. There was some condition in my body because of which they said we'll never have children. And so, when my daughter was born, God's sense of humor was such that she was born on our eighth wedding anniversary. We've all got choices to make. And sometimes some of the choice that you make, you got to make is, whose report will you believe? Am I going to believe God's report? Because with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. I can tell you, I can tell you the trauma of what a lady will go through when we don't have children. The biggest trauma is in the church, unfortunately. Aunties will come and ask him, well, nothing's happening, nothing will happen. Mm. There'll be only one place she can go and cry. That'll be on her husband's shoulder, nowhere else. And as a husband, I've learned at that point, you can't do anything, nothing. You can only go to your covering. That's the heavenly father. Nowhere else, nowhere else. 
Jeremiah 29, 11, we all know this. For I know the thoughts. God's got thoughts. He's got thoughts. He's got thoughts of hope, of prosperity, of peace. He doesn't have thoughts of harm. Religion has said that, you know, he'll give you nine good things and one tenth one spot. That's religion. That's not God. He's got thoughts which are precious. He's got thoughts of goodness. He's got thoughts of hope, of expected end, of peace, of prosperity. That's his thoughts towards you and me. Think of this. My father, who is creator of whole universe, for whom there is nothing impossible, loves me with an extravagant love and has made me his son, made me his daughter, and he's got great thoughts concerning my life. He's got great thoughts concerning each one of us. He's got thoughts which are unique. You don't need to be somebody else. Don't live someone else's dream. God's got a dream. He's written a book on your life. Try and figure what he's written on those pages. Choice number two that you and I have to make. John chapter 5 verse 44. This was the, the only passion Jesus had. John 5 44 says, How can you believe which receive honor one of another? And seek not the honor that comes from God only. Seek not the honor that comes from God only. The praise that comes from God only. There is a recognition, there is an honor that comes from God and God alone. And I've got to make this choice that that's my passion. My passion is, is to say my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. My beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. That's got to be my passion. And the passion won't come unless I taste his love. You can't work the passion up. The passion comes when I taste the love that he has for me. That's got, you know, this is critical because every choice that you make, this becomes your reference point. Father, am I pleasing you? Is this well pleasing? Is this your thought concerning my life? I want to honor you. They said about a man of God who is being mightily used by God. And they said this, they said this, that God is honoring him in the public because he chose to honor God in the private. The challenge for us is to live a life of integrity where no eye sees, where no ear hears. Because if, 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 if I choose to live a lifestyle like that, it becomes easy for me to do everything else. Choice number three, important for young people. Who are your friends? Can someone tell me quickly what's the difference between a friend and acquaintance? Friend and an acquaintance. When you ask a question and you look at the crowd, everybody starts looking here and there. <laughs> a friend that speaks into your life. Speaks into your life. Acquaintance doesn't. You've got to take a check of who your friends are. I'll tell you why it is important. The Bible tells there are two kinds of people. One is the wise and the other is the fool. Okay? Psalm 14, 1 and 53, 1 talks of fools and says, The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. A fool is one who's going to give you advice which is devoid of relying on God. And if they're the kind of people that are saying, And then he starts to ramble things which are contrary to giving God honor, you have a problem. You will have a great friction within your heart then when you want to make the choice because you will either honor God or you have to honor Him. One of the two will happen. Then the question becomes, who is bigger in your life? About the wise it says in Proverbs 1, 7, Psalm 111.10, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Why is this important? Because Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 says, 
He that walks with wise men shall be wise, but a company of fools shall be destroyed. We've established who is a wise man, we've established who a, 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 a foolish man is. Now let me tell you, who are you walking with? You know why? More often than not, if you're not married, chances are that you will tend to check with your friends. Good option, not good option. What do I do in life? What do I pursue? Wise counsel, foolish counsel. What comes your way? I want you to know that we are living in an age where it is the Babylonian system which is actually govern the, governing the economy. The Babylonian system is a very simple system. The Babylonian system does not put God in the center of things. Now you call it democracy, you call it communism, you call it capitalism, you call it socialism, you call it any name. If it is not centered on the king who is the kingdom owner, it's bound to let you fall because it's going to put you on a treadmill where you will run and run and run and run and never realize your dream and you will get stressed out. Which is why it is important to have people who can give you kingdom advice. Because you know, I, I, I was a part of a fellowship here and uh, you know this was way back from 97 onwards, we were in that fellowship till about 2008, 2009, before the person moved away to the US. Um, and we had a young guy, uh, you know, just out of college, joined Apollo Hospitals as a radiologist. Um, he came from a um, Christian background, yes, went to the Orthodox Church, got saved, and, and uh, was hungry for the Word of God. And as a radiologist, probably was earning about 4,000, 5,000 rupees a month. That was the salary that he was getting. So he and another person who was coming to the fellowship, uh, you know, they took up a small flat and they were staying there. I remember, uh, I remember this guy, you know, high on energy. You go, I mean, radiologists, radiologists, anyone who knows, it's not an easy job because you're meeting people who need to, you know, get exposed to different kinds of radiation. Some of them might do well, some of them might not do well, some of them are cranky, some of them are heavy, a lot of things. He would always be with a smile, he would always help them out. And I remember by the third Sunday, he would always tell me, Rohit, he'll take out his purse, my last pie for the month, and he'd put it as tight into the church offering bag. And so this place where we were going for, uh, uh, you know, fellowship, one day he opened up and he said, you know, my parents were saying, there's really no point. You know, Malu Christians, if you don't land up in Dubai, you are an exception. So, you know, his parents were hounding him. Oh, we get you to a hospital in, in the Middle East. You don't need to struggle. You start making the money. But this guy was so hungry for the word. He wanted to be a part of the fellowship. He just got saved. And so he was sharing about it. And the person who was leading the fellowship said, why don't you consider doing an MBA? He said, there's no way that's going to happen because my, my parents are not going to support. They want me to go to the Middle East. He said, why don't you pray and come? So he, he spent the next probably a month or so praying, felt release and peace in his heart to pursue an MBA, but he had to work, so he, you know, he applied to Liba. Took an application form, he gave him the money for the application form, took the application form, wrote the test, got through, now for the fees. So the person who was leading the fellowship said, I'll give you the fees, go on and study. Three years, Excel, today, Vice President of Operation for a Hospital in Mauritius. Who are your friends? Who are the people who are speaking into your life? Is speaking God's plan? Would have been very easy. Go to Dubai. Somebody could have said. Another person could have said. There are a lot of fellowships there. Much are you go? Different. Someone was spending time praying for this man, realized God's will over this man's life, and gave a wise counsel wise counsel. The book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 22 says, without counsel purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counsels they are established. What kind of counsels come into our life? I want to wrap it up with this one last verse. This has been a foundational verse for me. In 2009 I decided to quit ICAC Lumpai. I, I, I quit it primarily for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I thought by the age of 31, 32 I'll get into full-time ministry. And um, 
you know, God's been gracious. I, I joined ICICI in, in 2003. I joined, I joined there as a sales manager and got promoted as the youngest national sales manager by 2005. He, there was nothing wrong with any of that. I mean, I was doing very well. Uh, I was doing a lot of travel, but somewhere in between, I kind of felt, this is not what I'm called for. I, I, I thought, let, let me take a sabbatical. Let me, let me just spend some time with God. I got in, I, the very first day, the, in fact, I, the, my last working day was a Saturday. Wanted to fast and pray. Monday morning by 10.30, God had clearly spoken to me and said, I'm going to start a business. And that's how you know, we started the recruitment firm. But from that time on, this has been my verse, which is foundational for me. John chapter 16, verse 13. Howbeit, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. He will show you and me things to come concerning our lives. It's his good pleasure to show it. I need to spend time with him. You know, when I did my MBA and uh, was going in for my, you know, the companies were coming in for campus recruitments, I decided to choose logistics because I was fascinated by logistics and I thought that's going to be good fields. Fairly, fairly, you know, rest assured that you know, that's, that's where I want to be. So I did my first round, did my first round well. My next round was with the GM. Uh, and, and, and I remember the, the, the previous night, uh, I was spending time in prayer. And I, I just want to give this as a tidbit to you. Uh, if you got the gift of tongues, that's what you got to exercise. Uh, spend time praying in tongues. And so I was praying, and as I was praying, um, it was like, the question would come, and I'm rehearsing the answer. The question would come, and I'm rehearsing the answer. So the next day when I went and sat in front of him for the interview, every question that was there during the time that I was praying was the questions that he was asking. Please. And I had the answer for it. Amen. He will show you things to come. He will show you and me things to come. He told Abraham, how can we hide it from a friend? He will show us things to come. Let me tell you something. Um, if you find it hard, find out God's will, the easy answer is die to your own will. It will be easy for you to find out God's will. Every choice that you make, take it from this one central thing of your father loves you. Can we bow down for a word of prayer? And if you, and if you want to, um, uh, if you want to uh, tell God, God, I want to know you as my father. I want to know you. Uh, I've given my life to you, but I want to know you as my father. I want to taste you as my father. I want you to talk to him now. I want this to be your time with Him. Where you open your heart out. As David said, oh, pour out your heart to Him. Pour out your heart to Him. Pour out. I, whatever will be the need, whatever will be the decision that you have to take, whatever will be the choice that you have to make, it does not matter whether the economy is doing well or the economy is doing bad. Because God's word, plans and purposes will have to turn that economy to fix and fit you in. It does not matter. It it, it, it does not matter whether whether um, uh, your desire uh, 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 it, it does not ring bells with friends around you. It does not matter because God's hand of blessing, once it comes upon you, when you choose to honor Him by choosing His will will far outweigh everything else. And let me tell you this, my friends, that with His promise comes His provision. He will provide when He speaks His word of promise into your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, I give you praise. I give you praise, my Heavenly Father.
I give you praise for this time. I give you praise for every single child of yours sitting here. I give you praise. I give you, I give you the glory. I give you the honor. Lord, we worship you. Savior who can move the mountains, we worship you. Savior who can move the mountains, we worship you. Savior who can move the mountains, we worship you. We give you all the adoration this evening. We give you all the adoration this evening. One who is worthy of all adoration, we worship you. One who is worthy of all adoration, we worship you. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. And I pray for my friends, young friends, Lord Jesus. Every, anyone here who is struggling with an identity in the name of Jesus father I pray for the hand of God to come and touch the very depths of their heart that Lord from starting from this day forth every day would be an encounter with you every day would be a day where they would realize themselves in you we would taste of your love and would be transformed into the image of God most high Holy Spirit of God for everyone who's taken a stand for you I pray oh my glory and the lifter up of our heads that you would lift them up oh master and, and place them in a place of standing where everyone who has spoken against them would come and would talk about God's love upon their lives. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Give you praise, Lord Jesus. Everyone who is seeking uh, what to do next, my precious Holy Spirit of God, according to your word in John chapter 16, verse 13, I pray that you would speak to them, that you would speak to them, that you would show them clearly what needs to be done. Show them clearly what needs to be done, Lord Jesus. We give you praise and thanks, Father. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you for this time that you've given us to come and listen to your word. 
Thank you for inspiring our hearts, instructing our minds, informing us. And Lord, uh, thank you for the influence that has been uh, released upon our lives through your servant this evening. We thank you, Lord, as a Christian professional, Lord, that Lord, he comes to us, he has come to us with experience and uh, Lord, not just worldly experience, but Lord, the experience of walking with you. We thank you for that life that inspires us to live the life, the kind of life that some of these good men have lived, to follow their ways, to follow their Lord way of life and the faith and prayer and Lord, uh, the, the trust they have put on you. We pray that this will be passed on. We thank you for the has been passed on. We pray that it will continue to instruct us and inspire us and, and teach us. Lord, let your Holy Spirit take what has been, Lord, given to us tonight. And Lord, continue to remind to us once again. We pray in times of need that your Lord word will ring out in our hearts and our minds again and again. And lead us, Lord, to the right ways. We pray that we will not go on the wrong way. We pray that we will walk in your ways and your ways alone. We pray that, Lord, everyone who has walked into this, Lord, church this evening, Lord, will continue to walk in your way. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will take complete charge and bless everyone's life, bless their future. Especially we pray for their children, Lord, uh, Lord, their, Lord uh, those parents who are concerned about their children and their future. We pray that, Lord, you will give them rest in their hearts and their soul. Lord, that they will not be worried or anxious. Lord, but they will put their trust in you and you will open ways and doors for them. That you will lead them and guide them according to your will for their lives. We thank you for the beautiful plans that you have for us. You have plans, Lord, not to harm us, but to prosper us. And Lord, lead us to an expected end. Lord, we pray your blessing upon everyone seated here this evening. And we pray especially for Brother Rohan and your blessing be upon the work of his hands and his family and the ministry. Lord, we pray that you use him to guide and lead many, many young people, oh Father. Use him mightily, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. Let your name alone be glorified. We love you. We worship you. We praise you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.